Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show that explores all things essence. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, soul guide and mentor, and I'm really excited to have you with us today because we're going to have a very empowering discussion with our guest, Tamara, who is, you know, just an amazing individual. I got connected with you through one of our mutual friends, and uh, she, like me, we're like kindred souls, we feel it, um, has a deep passion and a soul's purpose to raise the vibration of the collective consciousness into one of pure heart-centered consciousness, to guide and facilitate your own unique awakening and embodiment of your divine self, to trigger the memories of your multidimensional dimensional being, which leads to your remembrance of the fullness of who you truly are. And so like me, her work involves mentoring and intuitively guiding people, truth telling and nurturing you with unconditional love and acceptance. And she has deep medicine, fierce and all encompassing. And so this is, this is my special friend. Welcome. Thank you, darling. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad you're here. So tell us a little bit about your journey to get to be where you are and you know for everybody who's kind of like okay well how do I find out about her you, we're going to put the website and everything in the show notes so you'll be able to access her website and look her up and everything you can get more details later don't worry about that now tune in so tell us a little bit about your story of how you got started with all this awareness like this ability to serve in this way ah oh, that's always such a big question isn't it um so I started off um, very, very intuitive as a little girl and, um, yeah, was very overwhelmed with, with it all. And I grew up in a family in the country, um, was very different to them. Um, so I started off very connected to the earth and the animals and, and spirit. They were truly my, my family that I felt very at one with. Um, I had some sexual abuse in my um, childhood, which sort of, really started my path um, of power and truth knowing and um, it started off my desire to to want to lead and help people and, and guide people. So, yeah, that took me into a career of being a beauty therapist originally. That was my first career, um, which was very kind of, it was lovely but quite superficial and it didn't didn't last long, but it was, you know, I was in a very superficial um, relationship with myself and very caught up in the whole perfectionistic kind of covering up the shame and the anger and um, all of the pain that I was in um, at that time in my life and, you know, was caught up in uh, partying and drugs and alcohol and, you know, not connecting to, to my heart at all. And um, so that career led me into knowing that I wanted something very um, different and deeper and um, being one-on-one -on -one with clients in a room, um, I was starting to really connect with um, guidance and intuitive nudges and, and passing that on to my clients and uh, that led me to really want to go into more of a psychological energy medicine, um, really soul medicine, which took me to homeopathy, um, homeopathic medicine, um, which was 20 years ago now. Um, and I, you know, studied for four years and, yeah, started my little office with no clients, praying that someone would come and see me. Um, and here we are 14 years later and, yeah, um, it's evolved from pretty black and white classical homeopathy um, into basically mentoring and guiding and, um, yeah, really showing myself for who I am rather than just under the guise of being a homeopath. So, yeah, that, that's me in a nutshell, really. I love it. And I love her website. There's, like, this picture of you with a feather where you're mm -hmm. holding the feathers up. And, I, you know, I just think feathers – bird energy is such powerful healing energy and it's really beautiful when we can step into this uh, deeper understanding of who we are and what the world actually is and all of the different plants and animals and rocks and all these things that are like really powerful allies when you open to their presence in your life and start to understand how they can be of service to you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very powerful medicine indeed. 
So, and that medicine is really, it's more yin based. You know, if you think of yin and yin and yang, you know, it's more yin, it's more feminine, it's more watery, it's more like subconscious, it's more feeling and sensing and having emotions and, you know, and feeling your way through the, to the answer rather than like this sort of Western yeah. prescribed one, step one, two, three diagnosis, you know, um, yeah. pathway, right? Absolutely. And that's where I found my, after years and years of being one-on-one -on -one with clients, that's really where I found myself opening up to guide people too, guide people home to their heart and guide people into their relationship with self and commune with their soul and to feel their way through everything um, because there is really nothing greater than the love that we are. You know, we are love and when we can really meet and greet ourselves with that love and all aspects of ourselves, it's the most potent and powerful unification that we can have. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking just before we got on about you know, this is a planetary ascension. We're in a planetary ascension time where everything is sort of amped up with the goal of helping us to ascend our vibration, ascend our consciousness, ascend our understanding of life and relationships and self as expressions of love. And that's a difficult concept for some people because I know I struggle with it from time to time. I get it. I understand now that like, because I always thought before love is just supposed to feel good, right? Mm. But on the way to that feeling of love, there's like a, other variations of love that don't often feel good. Like they're kind of abrasive or yucky. Talk a little bit about that journey to love, like that this is all love. And yeah, some of it doesn't feel like what we think love feels like. Mm. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of this old sort of spiritual paradigm uses love to sort of spiritual bypass all of the you know, the crappy, you know, sort of fucked up feelings in between. Um, and it's not about that. It's about feeling everything and feeling, you know, all of the icky emotions and just meeting it with absolute acceptance and absolute unconditional love. Because really when we're talking about love, we're talking about unconditional acceptance um, and, and no judgment, leaving all judgment out of it, um, which, which equals love. It equals, um, you know, this ascended um, acceptance of, hey, it really doesn't need to be picked at or judged or analysed. It just is what it is. Um, and with that comes this beautiful unification of self. There is no separation between, you know, that aspect that's feeling resentment and the true self of love. There is no separation. It's it's in alignment when there's when it's met with acceptance. So um, it's not about not feeling icky. It's not about not feeling um, all of those emotions that we're taught in the past to to judge as wrong because there is no such emotion as wrong. There's really no wrong or right. Um, and that's what we're moving out of. We're moving out of this judgment of wrong and right, you know, um, and it just is. And we can meet that with acceptance um, and meet that with love. And there is no other, there's nothing else, you know. So I think if we surrender, if we can all learn and practice a really deep surrendering, um, and let go of the need to use our logical human mind to pick things apart and to judge it and to, you know, make something of it. I think we all make too much of everything. Um, I think if we just learn to feel our way through um, and, and invite those feelings in and commune with those feelings and meet them with acceptance, everything would be really a, a whole lot simpler and a whole lot easier. Well, you know, this is where I like to bring in spider medicine because, mm. you know, spider is a good ally of mine. I was actually just in the jungle a little while ago and a spider, and I've had dreams about spiders for weeks and spider kept showing up in my dreams and I was going to the jungle and I was thinking, spider, I know you want to talk to me. Please don't bite me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. 
Yeah. I just draw the line. Like, I don't want to be bit, but I'm listening. I'm listening to you. The spider energy to me is kind of like, I've been talking about it for years where it's like, I used to be really good about spinning stories. So I would, you know, who knows what happens first. There's still this de debate whether the thought happens or the emotion happens first. I think that sort of happens simultaneously. There's some experience that's happening and we're getting sensory input, you know, and we're reacting. And then, and then what we can do is, I think what you're saying is like, be present with the feeling. Don't judge it. Just let it be there and let it, okay, you're here. You are here. I'm not going to deny you're here. Otherwise, that's insanity. You are here. And not spin stories about it. So that's the part that I used to, and I think a lot of people struggle with this. The thing happens, and then we want to like wrap a story about it. Like Spider mm -hmm. comes in and starts like making a whole web around it and then like connecting it with all the other webs and all the other times that this happened and this person did this and they were such a jerk. And like it just starts like building this entire universe of, of spider webs about this thing where if you didn't have any of that, but you just stayed with my current experience of this is this feeling. And then let it be witnessed. Eventually, it just in a few minutes, it just kind of goes poof. Absolutely. But it's the attachment of the story and like the digging in and attaching it to all the other times. Like the brain wants to connect mm -hmm. it and remind you of like every single other time this person was a jerk. Yeah. Just giving my yeah. recent example. So <laughs> I still struggle with this. I do think it's part of the human condition, though. I don't think we get mm -hmm. out of this desire. Like, I don't think we reach a level where it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. I mean, we've been conditioned to deal with our emotions that way. We've been conditioned in society to blame and shame others and find a reason for why we're feeling the way we're feeling, to take no accountability and responsibility for ourselves. Um, I mean, you see it everywhere. It's, it, it is the human condition, uh, but we're moving out of that. So it's good. Well, so talk a little bit about how we move out of that because, you know, everybody is, if you're in the right and wrong game, like I kind of left that game a while ago. I still have someone in particular that likes to thread me back in or try to pull me back into the right and wrong game. I don't really believe it anymore because I've seen people deal with the same circumstance a million different ways and I've channeled mm -hmm. enough guidance for people now that I'm like, yeah, that's not right. There, you know, it's not right that there's right and wrong. It's really not. It's sort of like... Mm -hmm there is this thing that happened and then there wasn't a, a response that it evoked in you and then you had a choice. Yeah. And if you go down this path with it, you get this outcome and you get to experience that. And if you go down this path with it, you get that outcome and you get to experience that. But really you're all, it's all learning to me. Talk, mm -hmm. that's my point of view. What's yours on it? Yeah, I agree. And I think that when we take our own relationship with self as our most important relationship and you know, yeah, someone can be an ass towards us or, you know, um, blame and shame us and, and point the finger and, and do all of those things that happens all the time. Um, and we can, we can join them in that. Um, like you said, there's a choice. We can join them and start to blame and shame back and justify and, and do all of those things. But you just stay in that game. You stay in that dynamic. You know, you're not, it's not serving anyone. And it's a game of the ego. It's a game of the mind, not the heart. So, um, you know, these days if I'm triggered by something someone has said or done, um, I kind of get a little bit excited these days. I used to try and avoid it and I used to try and do my damnedest to get out of that feeling um, because I was judging it as, as wrong. You know, I used to be disappointed in myself that I was triggered because I was in the whole perfectionistic, got to be perfect, you know. The spiritual um, judge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So these days I get excited because I know that there's an aspect of me stepping forward to be seen, to be witnessed, to be embraced, you know, to be welcomed back in, to be welcomed home. Um, and an aspect of me that I have judged in the past and that, you know, I've rejected. And so she's an aspect of me that's been in separation. So if someone's done something and she's then put her hand up to say, hey, I'm here, I'm in pain, it's, a, it's always going to be a blessing. It's always going to be um, a really good thing. And it doesn't mean that that person is off the hook and, and that person's, you know, not accountable for being an asshole. Um, that's not the case at all, but that's for them to deal with. That's, that's their stuff. And, you know, it, it then becomes about me and what I'm going to do with it. You know, it's an internal job 
always an internal job. And you can still be empowered and, and, and speak to that person and say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to accept that, you know. I don't, and you can move away from that relationship or friendship and, and not take it on and all of that sort of thing. It doesn't make you disempowered. A lot of people, I think, feel that um, if you're going to take responsibility for how you feel when someone treats you badly and make it all about you and nothing about them, I think some people feel like it's a really disempowered state, like you're going to be a bit of a doormat, but it's not. It's just that you're going to take the opportunity to do some inner reconciliation, but you can still stand up and say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not partaking in that. Um, and, and, you know, you can still be empowered at the same time. You know, it's interesting. I'm seeing her, th- I'm listening to you and I'm thinking back to other teachers, you know, teachers I've had that on my journey and there, you know, those, sometimes there's those moments where you're a teacher or something says something and you, and you just think, I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. And then sometime later it just goes click. So one of those that's coming up for me right now is I had this uh, teacher who said she got an email from somebody and they were really upset about her teaching or whatever and they had their claims and everything. So she went through and like checked her, did her inquiry, like is this any of this mine? Is any of this have relevance? Is any of, And then answered a nice email or something. And I think the situation went back and forth a couple times and they were in person together and the person kind of like did something. I don't know what she did. I think uh, she was getting more and more up, like, ramping herself up on the inside. And I think she actually ended up smacking my teacher. And my teacher went inside to check, like, what's the appropriate response? And the appropriate response was a smack back in that moment. Like, that was actually the correct response in that moment. And I thought, wow, because because I had what you were talking about at this inner judge. It was sort of like, oh, well, I would never, you know, like, I'm above that. Like I have this way that I felt like I'm above being angry. I'm above being judgmental. I'm above blaming somebody. I'm above telling them what I really think about them because that's not nice. You know, I'm above all this stuff, but we'll cycle in now at the store. I'll just be a guinea pig. You know, I'm fine being a big guinea pig. I love being a guinea pig because it gives people something really tangible to work with. And I don't mind being, you know, called out. So yeah. So this, we were talking about this just briefly before. So there's a lot of stuff going on the planet right now. Like there's, there seems to be some struggles with at least a lot of different masculine figures that I witness in the world. Like I'll give a couple examples. So the Brazilian president just took hold and he's decided he's going to cut down the rainforest in Brazil, which is like the lungs of the planet in order to make money in a short period of time for his people. So that's a pretty short-sighted decision, and that's very Yang-based. It's very, like, masculine, like, you know, I'm going to fix this right now, and I don't care what what the consequences are. We've had a lot of that on our planet. Of course, the United States, we've got a president like that right now, exactly like that, only going to do what's in his best interest, and he doesn't really care about anybody else, and he'll tweet all kinds of things out there. They're completely inappropriate for the president of the United States to be doing. So we've got that going on. And I'm not even going to get into a political discussion with anybody. Okay. I'm just saying my opinion. And if you don't agree, tune out. So now we also have my ex-husband <laughs> who's just like a thorn in my side, you know, like karma relationship for this lifetime to sort out. And so my approach so far has been like, I'm not going to stoop to the level of engaging in a low vibration way with somebody who constantly wants to engage with me in that way. And, and that's my tack. I've been like, I'm going to forgive this person. I'm going to have compassion. I'm going to word through it. I'm going to love this person. Like that's been my, that I've been doing that over and over again. And what does he do? He keeps doing things that are worthy of a smack. You know, like he keeps taking actions that are really worthy of someone like, coming up and just smacking him and being like, are you crazy? What are you doing? Like, this is not appropriate. So, and then, you know, he's narcissistic. So whatever, he never sees it, doesn't see it because he can't look in the mirror. So we got a lot of men out there like this right now. I know he's not the only one. It's an epidemic. And as women and empaths, we also 
I think we're a little bit in the situation that I've been in. It's like this inner place. Like, I don't want to get in a fight. I don't want to create an argument. I don't want to be the one that creates more. I don't want to feel my hatred for him. I don't want to, you know, all of that. I don't want to engage with it. I just want to like, like, you know, make it go somewhere, word through it, send the light through it, right? And I want to raise consciousness. And I know there's something you're channeling for me right now. So let's hear what <laughs> your guys are saying because I can see it in your eyes. Yeah. So let's so, explore this. There's people that are having this challenge. I'm not the only one. Yeah. Okay. So let's explore this. So one of the biggest things you said was, I don't want to feel my hatred for him. But if you're not feeling it, it's, it's still there. It's still there. So it's still an energy dynamic and it's still engaging with him on that level, which is why you're still having these interactions with him. Um, so the first thing we all have to do is get fucking real. Get real with how we're feeling, you know? It's <laughs> That's not how I feel in case yeah. he's watching. Fuck you. <laughs> and I'm saying it to the whole world, so kiss my ass. Okay, there we go. That feels good. <laughs> it's totally I'm so awesome. sick of you yeah. fucking with me and my kid. I'm so sick of it. Stop. Yeah. Be a and dad. <sighs> yeah. You know, feel the hatred. Feel the anger. Because without that, without acknowledging and embracing those aspects of you that feel that, you're still going to be in this relationship with yourself that's separated and, and not in alignment. So, and this is a really big thing in the spiritual community is that we judge ourselves that we can't feel certain things because it's not who we should be as leaders and as mentors and as teachers and as healers and as spiritual beings. But fuck that. It's about being real. It's about being authentic. And who said that anger was bad? Who said that anger was wrong? Who, who came up with all of these rules and regulations and conditioning around emotion when we were gifted, we designed ourselves to be emotional human being so we could commune with ourselves you know our emotions are uh, this this beautiful communion with with our soul and our higher self and our physical bodies and without that this is what happens we become deranged you know the human psyche becomes deranged and um we end up in the state that we are i've learned to feel everything and this has been a really recent thing for me i've because I felt so much as a kid, I felt everything. I felt everything that everyone around me was feeling and thinking. Um, and it was like, what, why, and, and what do I do with it? Um, so as I grew older, I, I really shut my feeling, which is my greatest sense, down. Um, and it's only really been in the last year that I have gone, actually, that's my greatest gift. It's my greatest medicine. So I have to open myself up to feel everything. Remembering also that the old spiritual paradigm is that as empaths, we feel everything. And if we feel everything, we're taking it in and on ourselves. Not true. Not true. We don't take it on. We feel it, but that's because we're communing and receiving information through our energetic body. It's not that we're taking it on as part of ourselves. So that was the biggest thing for me to learn and the biggest thing for me to receive as, as a truth. So I, I lost that fear. I let go of that fear of feeling everything because I was no longer in that old belief system of, oh, if I feel it, I'm taking it on and then I have to clear and cleanse and, you know, I don't well, do that. you know, I'll speak to that in just a sec because uh – for me, that is an agreement. Like there's a hidden agreement that when you can find that, and I'll tell you, give you the reveal it what it is, you know, for a lot of people is the rescuer thing. And like, and the I'm responsible thing. Mm. And so when you claim being responsible for somebody else's stuff, because somehow you think you're supposed to do it, then you're actually, uh, stepping into their karma, like you're stepping in to their space. And this is where, um, you know, I, I've actually recently had a really powerful healing with this when I uh, worked with tobacco, which I might blow some 
on this broadcast just to clear some of this when we're done. But, you know, tobacco is like a really powerful ally for protection and like inner strength. Like, I just feel like, I feel like it has bolstered my, my inner wobble. Like it's like, it's like helped me to, it's helped me to come to the place where I can be like, you know what? That thing you just did pissed me off. I don't like that you did that. And here's why. And I'm going to tell you that I don't like it because I don't, it's not the way I want to treat my son, you know? So, but before I would be like, oh, you know, I don't want to get involved and I don't, you know, or I would take a responsibility for somehow I was responsible for this thing, this dynamic or in, in my family and I would take on people's energy and like be processing constantly. And, you know, I can do that. I'm capable. I'm designed to do that, but it doesn't mean I need to do it. So mm. I think that's clear boundaries, you know, talk a little mm. bit about like, how do we find those clear boundaries so that we know what's ours and what's somebody else's? I think when you really have that relationship with self where you're in alignment with yourself and you're always within communing with yourself, um, that's how you create that natural boundary because you understand what's you and what's not you. You understand what you feel and you know what's your truth and what isn't your truth. And it's never, it's never questioned. So you just, you're always in your centre, you're always anchored into your centre. And when you're not anchored in, you feel, you feel it. It's such a contrast that you want to get straight back in and you, and you want to align with your truth. Um, so therefore, boundaries are sort of a natural consequence of that. Um, and when you're very aware of your energetic field and you're expanding it rather than contracting it, and expanding it and feeling and receiving information and communing with your higher self and calling in your I am presence, you're so clear. There's such, there's such clarity around that, um, that you are your sovereign space. It's just a, it's just a, I mean, this is how we naturally are. This is our natural state of being. You know, we just got so far off track that we forgot that this is our natural state of being. So that's where the remembering comes in. We're remembering. We're not really learning. We're remembering who we really are and how we designed ourselves to be when we came into this human avatar, you know. So I think, you know, if people can just feel and acknowledge how they're feeling and commune with that, that's where you start. That's and where I, you and it feels like if people can let the great spirit work out the details. Yeah. Surrender. Like if you just go like this thing happened, it's out of alignment for me. It's not, a, this is not aligned with, with me and my integrity or my values or whatever you want to say. And I see you're doing it. That's not aligned with me. I'm not going to have that. And I'll just tell you straight out, I'm not going to have that. And here's like, I'm moving forward. Bye-bye. Do you deal with yourself? Like it's, it's like this, it's a very direct, I've actually seen women do this recently because women are learning this process right now. You know, I, some people are further ahead on the path than me because I started off a little timid, believe it or not. But I watch them go right after what they want. They just go, boom, it's mine. And I'm like, wow, like you didn't even stop to like check anybody else in the room. Like, you know, like there's this breaking of the social contracts around you know uh, checking in with other people or you know like mm. permission based talk yeah. you know what i'm talking about right between yeah. women and between everybody but a lot of a lot of times between women let's talk a little bit about that part too yeah we're really losing the conditioning and we're coming out of this you know veil and this sort of you know um spell that we've been under which is the human condition and we're stepping out of it and we're going well what feels right for me what's my truth what do I want and that doesn't mean that we're ruthless and insensitive and that we're not taking um, consideration for other people's feelings it just means that we listen to ourselves first and and we have to also remember that whatever's best for us is also best for the collective. And also when we're healing and integrating and reconciling, 
with all of those aspects that we've rejected, which, you know, talking about your example before, your, your anger, your hatred is an aspect of you that you have been rejecting. When you invite that aspect back in and reconcile with her, you're healing for the collective and yourself. So whatever we do for ourselves, we do for the collective. So um, it is, we have to. We have to put ourselves first. It's not selfish. It's, it's self everything. I don't even know the word okay. for it. You know, make up new word. <laughs> you know, this is so interesting to me because I actually recently had the homework assignment of um, – I had, a, I had a very, like, lucrative, financially lucrative uh, job for 20 years as a consultant, high-tech consultant, did marketing and technical communications for startup companies, and I was paid very well to do that, and I had, like, no issues finding money. Like, it would just fall into my lap. I would get project after project after project, and I worked, like, part-time, and I made over six figures, you know? So, like, I, it was great. I did my art in the rest of the time, and it was awesome. So, since I've done this path, you know, I, I changed directions, and I changed careers. I changed into the spirit path, which is, like, got to tell you, folks, it's a whole other kind of job. Like, this kind of job is, like, whoa, you know? Like, this is some serious stuff. You're interfacing with the great spirit to do work on behalf of all for the great spirit. Yeah, you get tested to the very like bitter drugs, bottom of the barrel stuff. <laughs> so it's been a fun process. Um, and I've learned a lot, but it is a very different than me just kind of like snapping my fingers and wanting some work, you know? Mm. So um, I've been asking myself, and my homework assignment was, you know, what are, the, what are the aspects of my former personality, my former being in the world, where I was able to do that? What aspects of that have I sort of like, pushed off to the side and disowned and not allowed in. And now look, I get the perfect opportunity to know what it was by this situation, mama bear, where my ex-husband wants to pull more crap. And my mama bear comes out and she's like, you know, it's that part of me that was a little instant. It's a little insensitive, you know, from my healer <laughs> taste. There's a little bit of insensitivity, but there's a real directness and there's a real, like, here is, like, the, the sword of truth, like, cutting through your BS, and, and I'm not sparing your feelings. I'm like, here it is, as I see it, like it or not, and I'm not putting up with it. Mm -hmm. That is a very, you know, that's a part of me that I used, that I judged, because I hurt a lot of people with what I would say. Or you perceived you hurt. I perceived people. I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's one of the things we've been attaching to speaking our truth is that if we speak our truth, it will hurt people. It will, oh, well, how, you know, how are they going to feel about that? And, um, you know, I don't think we've ever really been taught to speak our truth from the heart. It's always been this perception that we're going to speak our truth from our ego and our mind and a fear-based, you know, sort of fuck you perspective. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be fierce. And it can be fire in your belly, but it can come through the heart and be, hey, you know, I know you've got stuff going on. I know that you're in pain and all of that. And I, I have compassion for that and I send you love, but this is my truth and I'm out, you know, um, and I won't, I won't invite that in and I won't accept it in, you know, so you can go play on your own. But, um, you know, we can do that. That's the divine feminine um, power that's divine feminine truth is to speak it and speak it with full acceptance full acceptance of of that that is your truth and and that's perfect there's nothing right or wrong about it it just is you and you're expressing you um, and we all need to be taught that again you know and remember that again um, and we need examples of that um, you know, the divine feminine movement of the Me Too movement and all of this, all of these women coming out um, and expressing their um, truth about abuse and, and in particular in the, you know, film industry. Uh, while that's really good and it's very healthy, I think there, it's, it's, there needs to come back and be a bit more of a balance around it um, in terms of it's not about it's not necessarily about 
men abusing women. It's about men and women expressing their truth around what they've been through and their abuse. So there are just as many men out there who are being abused and who have been abused and who have been belittled and put down and just as many, you know, and it's not about fighting one another. So I think that, you know, yes, it came out that way and it had to be fiery and it had to be, you know, all encompassing all over the world. But I think now we need to move back into this place of, well, hey, let's acknowledge that the human race needs to come back to its truth and its heart space and acceptance and, you know, let's support everyone um, in that. Yeah, and, you know, it's also true that there's a lot of people who have perpetrated right? Or have perpetration in their history, in their lineage, which means it's coming through their DNA. And which if you don't understand that, let me just spell it out a little bit more. Like when something is coming through your DNA as a pattern, it can be super difficult to not fall into the track of the pattern. Like it can be your life's work to like hang on the edge and be like, no, I'm not going to go there. You know, like that thing, it's in my lineage. I'm not doing that. You know, um, and so there's sort of like, there's this way in which we need to be able to have conversation around it, right? Like we need to be able to say like, to speak words, like I'm feeling urges to whatever this is and I don't want to act from that. But it's like, if it's taboo to discuss it, if it's taboo to come out with it, then, you know, how are we going to move forward? Because it's just being pent up and bottled up inside of somebody that one day is just going to pop and they're going to go do that thing. And now we got another me too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, you know, the real perpetrator is shame. You know, this, this, this level of deep, deep shame that most of us in some way on some level have felt about ourselves. You know, it doesn't matter what the subject is around it. But shame is one of the biggest, oh, yeah, it's, it does the most damage, I believe, um, to the human psyche and the, and the mental and emotional and physical bodies. So, you know, let's lift the lid on shame and let's bring in some acceptance and some, some space. Let's create some space for people to talk about how they're really feeling with no judgment, you know, really, I think that that is the greatest medicine and that is the greatest remedy to all of this. Um, and yeah. also like, you know, like clearing the webs, hmm. like all the stories you want to tell about somebody that keep, you're trying to keep that person in the mud with you. Yeah. And you're like, you're mud wrestling with them by keeping that story alive. And people do it all the time. Like how Don Miguel Ruiz talks about that in his book, The Four Agreements. You know, how, how people in our Western mindset, they want you to suffer again and again and again and again and again and again for the same thing. Yeah. A thousand times punished for, this, for one thing. Hmm. And they can't ever let it go. It's like it's never going to be enough punishment. When you're working in the punishment system, like it's never going to be enough. You're never going to feel like I just got it. You know, I got my pound of flesh. Now I can move on. Yeah. It's the kind of beast where if you're playing in that space, you want your pound of flesh over and over and over and over again because it's the only way you feel like you're like you ate, you know, mm -hmm. you saturated yourself with it. Yeah. And what we're yeah. saying is like, that's not the answer. It's that not. leads to more Absolutely. suffering. Absolutely. And it will just perpetuate this, the whole dynamic, you know, over and over again. And it's, it's not, it's not this level of awareness that, that we're moving into, you know, the level of awareness that we're, we're bringing in and remembering is that there is no blame and shame. There is no right and wrong. It's just acceptance, not acceptance of the behavior of that person. We're not saying, hey, yeah, do what you want. Let's go and abuse everyone and, and be violent and murder and maim and all of that. We're not, we're not saying accept that. We're just saying make your business your business and make your emotional relationship with yourself your business. 
um, and always come back into yourself. Don't make it about other people. Um, and you can do that and you can have boundaries and you can create loving, healthy relationships. But you can't create healthy, loving relationships when all you're looking for and all you're looking at is everything outside of yourself. You can't do it. It's impossible. So, you know, go within, go within, go within, go within. That's what I say to my clients all the time. Let's go within, let's go within. The answers are always within. The medicine is always within. The healing, the reconciliation, everything that you want to feel, everything that you seek is already within. You are already everything that you are seeking. So, you know. So it's coming in now and I get it now. Here's the thing. What you were saying earlier about I haven't processed my hatred and therefore that's why he's still reacting to it. It's always within. I'm the one that needs to release it from my being. And as I release that from my being through whatever method I want to use to process those feelings, then what's going to happen is that my energetic frequency is going to change and we're no longer going to be in alignment. Yes. It's going to be like the Velcro no longer sticks. So I think that that's excellent and perfect and, and, the only thing I want to speak about that is that you don't need to release anything. I think if we move out of this belief system that we need to release, so you're talking about releasing your anger, your, your hatred towards this person, but when you release it, what you're really doing is you're still rejecting that part of you that feels the hatred. So what we want to do is we want to invite those aspects, those emotional aspects in. We want, to, we want to welcome them home. We want to reunify. We want to bring about this unity consciousness within yourself where that aspect of you that feels hatred, what is she needing from you? What is she wanting? What does she need? Ask her and, you know, no doubt she'll tell you that all she wants is to be loved and heard and acknowledged and told that, hey, it's okay that you're feeling hatred for this asshole, you know. so. We really want to learn. We really want to teach people that whatever you're feeling is an aspect of you. And rather than releasing that aspect of you and that emotion and rejecting that aspect and emotion of you, we want to invite her in, welcome her home and meet and greet her with absolute, absolute unconditional love and absolute unconditional acceptance. And then what happens is, we have this process of inner alchemy. Love does the work for you. Love and acceptance will do all of the inner work for you. We don't have to do that. We don't actually have to process anything. All we need to do is be willing to welcome that aspect of ourselves in and let the inner alchemy process take hold. And, and love is the power that does that. And so... I love that. That's reminding me now of uh, another person I know who's one of her primary things she does with people is teach them how to give themselves the apology they'll never receive. Yeah. Like this man is never going to apologize for all the heinous ways that he's acted towards me and my son because he doesn't see it. He, I know already he's not going to do it. So mm -hmm. I've tried to spiritual bypass it, right? And be like, well, he can't, he's not capable. So we're not going to get it, you know, but that's not good enough, right? It's like, you've got to admit like, no, at some level, this, this makes a part of me really angry that I have to constantly be subjected to this person's behavior, you know, over and over again is this part of my life with being the father of my children. Mm -hmm. And that his recourse is to try to drag me back into shame and blame where he wants to shame me and blame me and make, make me responsible for everything. And he wants to like discredit my character and all kind. Of, he wants to just be just a mean son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. And which is why I left him. Thank God. But in this moment, it's like to give myself an apology from that, from myself. Like, I'm so sorry that I ever subjected you to such an asshole. Yeah. Like, I'm so sorry that I made you have children with this person, but I'm really glad I did because I love my, my sons. But 
good. I'm really, really sorry that I t made you marry this person. Yep. I'm really sorry for that. I'm really sorry I expected you to be kind and nice to this person when they were being terrible to you. I'm sorry that I ever asked you to do that. Beautiful. Because that sucks. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. It is about parenting ourselves, parenting, constantly parenting and giving ourselves what it is that we need and not expecting that from another human being because we, we have no control over that human no. being. Yeah. We have no control and we have no control. And I'm convinced that, by the way, as I even say all this, I'm very convinced that the great spirit puts these lenses over everyone's eyeballs so that they see the situation in the way that they need to see it in order to be righteously claiming their point of view against the other person who's also perceiving it through their righteousness lenses that they think they're absolutely correct. And so we have a whole world of like people that think that they're absolutely correct with their perception mm. and they don't see it. They don't see it and never going to see it from someone else's point of view. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you can, if you, if you, um, exercise your shape-shifting muscles you you can kind of see it from other or you can I can tune into other people's stations and so tuning into someone else's station I can get a download from them I'm like wow that's pretty different than this other person but not a lot of people can do that or are willing to do that mm. and so we're set up for like this knocking mm -hmm. against each other constantly like always banging up against each other with differing perspectives and points of view and Mm. and maybe this is the diamond you know maybe this is how spirit creates that friction that's needed to elevate its own consciousness mm. and so we can learn how to parent ourselves because in you know at some point most of us realize that we're never really truly going to get what we want from anything or anyone outside of ourselves so we you know sometimes very slowly learn how to provide everything that we could ever possibly want and need for ourselves. You know, it's the ultimate responsibility. Ultimate self-responsibility is to learn how to parent ourselves. And when we do that, it doesn't matter how much we bang up against other people and their perspective because it, we're not expecting anything from them. But what, what happens eventually is that when you're in this beautiful relationship with self and you're meeting and greeting yourself with absolute love, you do change completely your vibration and you change, you change your inner world and therefore your outer world reflects that. So in the end, you stop kind of inviting in these experiences that make you feel a certain way. So it's a win-win, you know, it really is a win-win. Yes, it is. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. And well, that's really insightful. That was a beautiful discussion, beautiful insights. Uh, really appreciate your, you know, contributing your your wisdom, your background, your perspective, your channeled insights, and uh, and of course all the guides that we called it before we started the show. Thank you so much for all your wisdom, because you know we're working this consciousness thing here on Earth. It's quite yeah. fun. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how you like to work with clients, like what kind of clients you prefer to work with and, you know, just give us like a sense of who your ideal client is and how they can reach you and work with you. So I predominantly work with women. Um, I do have male clients and I welcome male clients in, but it turns out that I attract predominantly women clients and, um, Normally, you know, from mid-20s through to mid-60s, um, quite a broad range of, of age. Um, and I really love to work with um, humans that are really ready to empower themselves enough to really go within and are willing to really feel their way through and learn a different way um, of being, you know, to go through this beautiful process of, of remembering that they are love, remembering that they can have a relationship with themselves, remembering that it's okay 
everything about them is okay, everything. There is, no, there is nothing to fix. There is nothing to change. It's just a matter of coming home and remembering who you really are and that no matter where you are on your journey, no matter where you are in your life, it's okay. There's no judgment. There's no right or wrong. And, and there's nowhere that you have to be. I find that so many people are having anxiety and fear around, but I should be over here, but I should be here. I should be feeling this. I should be feeling that. There, it, no, where you are is perfect. Um, and just settle in, surrender, meet yourself with love and acceptance, and the rest will just unfold perfectly for you in your time. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty fiery, as you can tell. Um, I love to speak my truth and um, I don't hold back, um, but it works. And, you know, um, and that's the sort of clients that I love to attract is, is, you know, they're up for it. You know, they can handle the heat, they can handle the truth and they can handle the potent love and the container that I create. So you can work with me in a couple of different ways. You can work one-on-one, -on -one, um, and I have three different ways you can do that. You can book in just for one single session whenever you feel the need, um, or you can um, join me for a three- or six-month um, mentoring one-on-one -on -one package, which means that it's a lot more intimate and we create this beautiful container together for your own inner alchemy, um, and we have a lot more contact. So that's, I love doing the packages because I, it's such a beautiful, potent way to work with someone one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I also have an inner mentoring um, program with a group, um, normally a small group, anywhere between sort of four and eight uh, women. And that's online as well as in person if you're in um, South Australia. Otherwise, it can be all online. Um, and that's a really potent way to work with a group of women as well. So, yeah. And I also have a range of products that I hand make. Um, so that contains all of my medicine and magic and, and um, presence in as well. So, yeah. And tell us your website. Is, uh, it's going to be in the show notes too. So, but yeah, My website is alchemist.com. And you can buy my products online as well as contact me through the website. Wonderful. Tamara, that was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. I know we're going to be working together more and uh, doing some magical stuff as it's unfolding. And uh, I'm really excited to just have interviewed you and shared wisdom and be connected. You're such a beautiful, bright light. And yeah, that divine feminine leadership, we need that now more than anything. And we need more, you know, we're doing the frontline work on ourselves. All of us who are doing this in the world, across the world, are doing it in our own way for ourselves, but then it's also helping everybody. So conversations like this, I think, help to illuminate uh, how to navigate little sticky, icky parts. Yeah, yeah. And to let people know that we're all human, you know, we're all doing it. We've all got our shit going on and it's all okay. No one's better than anyone, you know. It's just that we put up our hand to, you know, kind of lead the way. So, you know, it's all good. Um, yeah, we get, to, we get to go over the hurdle first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much yeah. fun. Yay. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of nice when you have somebody at the other side going, oh, good job, you, you know, put your foot here. You know, yeah. like, catapult yeah. yourself over this way. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. And I always end by giving people kisses. So if you want to join me, here they come. <laughs> Love you guys. I hope that was helpful. And we'll see you next time on Soul Nectar Show. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Bye.